brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mission. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have a great sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my mistreated fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God, He comes with vindication. With divine re recompense, He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute, mute will sing. Streams will burst forth the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
in chains. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a 7th century father of the church whose name is St. Irenaeus, and he provided profound teaching for us. He was fighting the heresy of Gnosticism. The Gnostics believed that there was a superior insight into the Catholic faith. If you are an intellectual, but if you are not, then you were at a lesser grade and you weren't able to understand it. So Irenaeus of refute their sort of false belief that the faith is for everyone. And it's really sort of being humble that seems to be able to respond to the faith more deeply from the depths of their heart and their soul and the reality of a profound love that they have for God because they realize his love for them. And he would give us a one statement that resonates throughout the church, that the glory of God is man fully alive. And just like a parent who rejoices at their child and they sort of are living in other words, as God would want them to live, accomplishments and happy, rejoicing, knowing who they truly are. So God, in other words, may say, rejoices or is glorified when we live in accordance with his will. And when we read the sacred scriptures, we know that we always have to take them in the full context of our salvation history. 
And so we know at that fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve, because of the deception of the devil, that sickness and death entered the world. And that is not what God had destined or desired for us. He desired that we be truly his children, able to live in a perfection of holiness and freedom, of rejoicing and knowing who we are because he created us so that he can be glorified by our life. And so throughout all of the Old Testament that we call it, God was planning for centuries for the coming of his son, Jesus Christ, into the world by giving the people a message of hope. And if you know our Bible history, as we say, you know that the Israelite people were always being held captive or in bondage by some more dominant nation. And when you're in that position, there is obviously the tendency to fall into a state of despair or despondency. Look at my sort of wretched condition, how I am. But God would give us the prophets. And by the means known to him alone of how he would speak to these prophets, they were able to give and proclaim his words to the people in need. That's why when we hear prophetic statements, it always thus says the Lord, helping us to understand that it's not the prophet's opinion or their own words that they are speaking, but the very words of God as a message of consolation, as a message of hope to a people in a dire need. And so we hear in this wonderful prophecy from Isaiah today to those who say his hearts are frightened. Be strong, but fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. And while it will be 600 years after the prophet Isaiah of the incarnation of Jesus Christ, when he would truly be with us on this earth, it was an opportunity for the people to have a hope in a God who did not abandon them, a God who forgot about them, but a God who was sort of always with them, and even though they could not see him, they could not speak with him, as will happen in the New Testament when our Lord is here on earth, that profound message of hope was meant to fill their hearts with joy, with a spirit that God is with me in the midst of what I am experiencing, what I am suffering. And Isaiah would speak about who this God will be, this Messiah, the Savior, and the things that he will be able to do. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, and the tongue of the mute will sing. How the Messiah and others will respond to the human condition. Of everything that entered, as I said, because of the effects of sin in our world, the aspect of death and disability and sickness and disease and every other ailment or affliction that truly afflicts us. But he's also able to change, in other words, by the analogy that we have here of things of the earth, with a profound joy that is meant to live within our hearts. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools in the thirsty ground, springs of water. Wonderful images of a God who is there to save us, a God who is there to love us, a God who is there to help us in all situations of life. That's why the first reading is always a prefigurement of what will be fulfilled in the gospel passages that we read or that we hear. And so we see that today in the words of our Lord. As he is on his mission, in other words, of bringing salvation to the people, teaching them what they need to know about the love of the Father for them, you're told that as he enters the district of the Decapolis, the city of ten cities, he is there so now in pagan territory. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and bade him to lay his hand on him. Intercession for someone that we know was in need. And do we do that in our daily lives? We know people are in need, whether it be physical ailments, spiritual ailments, in any way we can trust them to the mercy of God. Come, learn about Jesus Christ. Come to Mass with me. Come, pray with me. This aspect of intercession, stepping in the breach, may say for another one, that God and others may be able to touch them and heal them in some way, in a way that God knows that they need to be healed. And so as he looks at this man, we're told that he takes him off by himself, away from the crowd. And we always need to be able to understand sacred scripture from the aspect of the theology of it. If we can look at the church, where we are now, the kingdom of God that Christ will establish on this earth called the Catholic Church, 
and the outside world, where there is noise, there is commotion, everything in other words that is going on, we know that we cannot always hear God perfectly. We cannot listen to Him, as the Father had told us on two occasions with the baptism of our Lord, and at His transfiguration. This is my beloved Son, listen to Him. And so in order to be able to hear clearly the words of God, we need some time away from the noise of the world, the distractions that separate us from being able to hear Him and to listen to Him. So He takes the man to the side by Himself, and even though the man couldn't hear the noise, you can still see, in other words, the commotion that goes on in the world, the busyness of it. And so Jesus Christ takes him away by himself. And he puts his finger in the man's ears and spitting, in other words, of saliva, and touches his tongue. You heard me speak about our rite of baptism, the sacrament of baptism. Some complained because I spoke for almost 25 minutes teaching about baptism. And I was thinking, should I do that again? <laughs> But I won't do that again today. And you get upset when I try and teach you, in other words, and it goes a little bit longer. But after the baptism that we have in form of water, after we present the white garment, the white candle, there, then there is this Ephrathah rites, where the words that the priest or the deacon, the one baptized, will say, that the Lord, in other words, opens the ears of the deaf, of the deaf and causes the mute to be able to speak. May you soon touch your ears, and touch the ears of the infant or whoever they are baptizing, that you may hear the word of God. May you touch your mouth, that you may proclaim his praise to the glory of God the Father. And so the very right that we use in the sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of cleansing us from original sin, the sacrament of helping us to be able to rejoice that God may glory in our being fully alive, because we're cleansing that sin that separated us from him, is what our Lord, in other words, gives us in the gospel passage that we have today. And immediately the man's ears were opened, the speech in heaven was removed, and he spoke plainly. That is what we are meant to do. So we come into the body of Christ, we come into the church, we hear his voice given to us in the sacred scriptures, given to us in the teachings of our faith, so that when we hear, we are meant to listen, so that it takes root in our hearts and our souls. And then we can go back out into the world and by a vow proclaim what we have heard to draw other people into his life. And today, if it wasn't a Sunday, then we would celebrate St. Teresa of Calcutta, who died in this state in 1997, was canonized in 2016. And we see that Mother Teresa would have been sort of an embodiment of St. Irenaeus also. We proclaim that the faith is just not for the intellectuals or the elite, those who think that they have a secret knowledge, they really control the faith, that they are the ones to determine what needs to be taught or what needs to be believed. But she was there among the poorest of the poor because the faith, the love, the gift of God is there for everyone. And so in the scriptures today, that's what I wanted to bring out, these two saints reveal to us that the glory of God God and others rejoice as we're not, but we are fully alive, living in accordance with His holy will, living in accordance with the dignity that comes from Him, not that we try and claim or take for ourselves. And then when we do that, in other words, when we're able to sort of teach it to those who need, as Mother Teresa, to go out to all the world, seeing Christ in those who are less fortunate, Christ in those who are abandoned, Christ in those who cannot hear the word of God would need to be able to hear it, and so she would teach it to them. Christ, in other words, we were not able to speak at first, but then, in other words, by the opening, the teaching of the faith, they would hear clearly so that they can proclaim it. These are living examples of the scriptures come to life in us. We are told at the end that he has done all things well because he is God. And he can only do things well because he is God. But he wants to bring us into his life so that by our willingness to hear and our willingness to speak, the world and others may be able to see that we also can do things well. Because we have a God who loves us, a God who is with us. Thank God.
Please stand for the question. I believe in one God, God of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, from all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the Lord and Father of the world.
Way of the supper was ended, took the chalice, and once more in the thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy upon us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Andrew, St. Gautama, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May Mary be co heirs of eternal life. May praise and glory come. Your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and ever.
Lord's Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separate. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, may be nourished and endowed with life, and the food of your word and your heavenly sacrament. May so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that they merit an eternal share in this life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements. Our information night for RCIA is this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. in the School Monkey Harvest Room. The Knights of Columbus are sponsoring and hosting a school fundraiser. There is a shrimp dinner this Friday, September the 10th, at the Knights Hall on 2nd Street. Tickets can be purchased at the parish office, the school office, and like most flowers. More information is available in the bulletin. St. Andrew Council of Catholic Women invite the women of the parish to join them for it. An ice cream social this Wednesday evening at 6 30 to celebrate the birthday of the Blessed Mother. And the parish office will be closed tomorrow due to Labor Day. The Lord be with you. And the Spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you, God. Save my life, the Archangel.